So, just like any other RC enthusiast out there, I've got multiple projects on the go that I couldn't be bothered to finish. You always see that, ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> I will get to them, and I, they're half shot, and I can't wait to show you guys. The F1 season is starting up, and it got me inspired. And by inspired, I remembered that I was given this kit by a friend of mine. It's a three racing FGX F1 car. It was their first release in 2010. This is a 14 year old kit that's been opened a few times, but never touched or completed. In fact, I've been sitting on it for like a year and I'm finally giving it a go. Well, let's have some coffee. Power up. And without further ado, let's dig in. So this is a 110 F1 kit and the first in the lineup, but this is totally discontinued and I can't get parts. When I say I can't get parts, if I turf this thing, game over. So I have opened this once, but I haven't checked. I don't know if all the parts are actually in it. Ooh, okay, here we go. Oh, a little helmet, sweet. Now he did start going into the shocks, but you know, he's really fastidious in keeping his stuff in order. So I'm pretty sure everything's in here. It's got a composite chassis plate. It's like some oil leaking inside there somewhere. More bags, body shell, cool stickers, and a good instruction manual. From my experience, these have been really, really good. Really, really detailed on how to put it together. More bags, more bits, and a bunch of loose parts. <laughs> A lot of little bits and pieces, but it looks hopefully all to be here. That looks cool on the table like that. Maybe, I think I'm just gonna go nice, simple white. Now I ain't no Max for Stappen over here, Bruh. but there's only one thing I really want out of this car, and that's for it to hit 60 miles an hour. <laughs> Is that too much to ask for a 14 year old kid? Probably. Is this video gonna end in tears and heartache? Yeah, probably too. Let's go. Well, giddy up. So it looks like my friend already started on the diff. So it called for 2000 weight in the diff. I thought that might be a bit thin. I think I'm gonna go with the 7K and good thing I did check and open it up. Now he built it all correctly, but he didn't put any fluid in there. So that's a good save. Trust but verify. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause the video now. There is no front suspension on this kit. It relies solely on this one piece of plastic to do the flexing, and I am anxious it will explode. Well, there's upgrades for it, but... Ain't nobody got time for that. You know what's awesome? Twisting these tiny little things in by hand, and then when you're done, finding there's a little wrench that you're supposed to do it with. Guys, this back end is a work of art. Seriously, all oh, cantilever is beautiful. I'm gonna feel bad if it breaks. Correction, when it breaks. We can't have nice things. It feels very fragile. This thing is so cool, man. It has been really fun to build too. Who knows how it's gonna handle at speed, but it looks the part. Tragedy, tragedy. Why you may ask? I washed it with soap really nice, but I used an old can of paint. This I think had frozen outside and kind of separated inside of there no matter how much I mixed it. We got a new fresh can here. Hopefully it'll be better and I can fix this. Oh my God. <laughs> A local hobbyist seems to have gone overboard painting his toy car, shutting down the interstate for three hours. News at 11. Can I go home and play Fortnite now? Too drink, too much root beer. It's designed for smaller wheels in the front, but because they're even, it brings up the wing. I'm gonna have to drop that down. But I got some contact drag foams. They look pretty good. Now I've hit my first real speed trap. This is a cheapy 3650 motor, but if you look at slots and you think, oh yeah, I can adjust that. Because even though there's slots for the motor mount, there is nowhere for that motor to move. And a smaller motor like a 2845 would slide in between 
but it will not fit that mount. What makes it worse is this original spur. It came in a bunch of different sizes, but you can't order them anymore. So now I'm stuck with only a 16 tooth pinion. So I'm gonna introduce this dirty old Surpass 3650 7700 KV motor. While not the cleanest, shiniest, the newest thing, this motor has actually taken a 124019 to 103 miles an hour stock gearing on 4S. I don't think we're gonna get 100 out of this thing. I can't get bigger with the pinion, but maybe we'll at least get to 60. Provided that's such a small pinion, I think that this motor will have enough top end speed to get us where we gotta go. The electronics woes don't stop there. This is the smallest, squattiest servo I have, and there's still a gap. And I still have to get in all the wiring and a receiver and a 4S ESC. So before you install a dirty old servo, make sure it works. That one's pooched, so now I gotta order a new one. Yeah, she's cooked. 24 hours later. This is a super cheap Metal Gear servo. Plus it's the only stubby one I could find quickly off Amazon. So I've got this big beauty 4S battery. It's a 3300 milliamp graphene. It's 100C. I've gotten good speed results out of it. The problem is, is it's not gonna fit. Like it doesn't wanna fit at all. Go in there, go in there, go. Uh. My plan is to loosen the screws and lift up this top tray and shim it. This beauty will actually fit in there. Now this comes with a servo saber, but I think I wanna live on the edge here. And you can see how big it is and how far under the chassis it goes. I think it's gonna be in the way for the battery, but it came with this tiny little servo horn and it should be up and out of the way of the battery. Little tip when you're setting up your servo, plug it into a power source. Doesn't necessarily have to be the one you keep, but make sure it's set to zero before you put the servo horn on. I managed to squeeze that in with some minor modifications. Now the problem is, is the servo can't servo. Poop! I don't even know how I would get the steering linkage to work there. Hmm, I really wanted to use that, but the necessity calls, I'll use the smaller one, I guess. So I put shims in four places where the top plate was connected to the chassis. And as a result, it put like crazy rake on the front end and it dropped it down. like. There's a little door on the side for the battery tray and you put the ESC on there. But with that out of there, I can move the motor, but it's giving me just that much more room so I can take out that 16 and drop in a 20. Nice. For a cheap servo, that thing is strong. Like look, I'm pushing down as hard as I can. And I've still got full throw. With that 3300 milliamp, I never would have been able to fit this stuff. I managed to fit this swing arm back on and chop out the back, and good thing I did, because there's no other place to put the electronics. This has to be like the tightest chassis. There's no room under the body shell. It is just crammed in there. doing out here guys do it whoa 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 he's got it there tiger <laughs> you look like you're mighty toothy go over there with your girlfriend bruh hi bud oh you're adorable i want to catch you come here oh oh hello 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 hi there critter well that was great but the traffic is not so great. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to speed run here today. But at least we got to meet my cool friend. Hello, friend. Hello, oh my God, you're the best. I just wanna grab your little butt. Hello, friend, you're pretty cool. Not happening here today, guys. Hope you don't wanna bite my finger. You're so cute. You must not pet rodent. <laughs> Peace, buddy. Well, at least I got to meet those little guys. It wasn't a complete waste of time. Whoa. Everything is so tight in here. I have it held in place by a screw. It's a bit quieter where I'm at now. I've been here before. But I also realized that I haven't showed the body until now. I mean, you saw the thumbnail, but man, was it a pain in the neck. And it took me so long to do. I will cry if I crash this thing. Well, I'll probably laugh a bit and then cry, but... Anyway, let's take a look at it. Guys, 
guys, this is my first shakeout with this thing on 2S and I am so anxious. It's completely untested and I just don't want it to be gone in 60 seconds. This thing looks amazing. Track's pretty straight. And it's nice and quiet. Don't forget, this thing was made for carpet, not the road. Very cool. Oh. Yikes. Oh, man. Whoa. Okay, that was my shakeout, like three seconds of driving. 2S. Here we go. <laughs> I just want one pass where there's not 19 cars. Full tilt. That was full beans. I think 4S is going to be ridiculous. So light. One more pass. Let's tempt fate. Yikes. 44 miles an hour. <laughs> 44 miles an hour on 2S. I guess we have to go 4S now. Oh my God, what am I doing? This has bad written all over it. Look, it's just rammed in there and that is possibly a problem. I shifted that battery closer to the front so hopefully that weight will keep it a bit steadier. <laughs> Kinda had to shove that GPS in there. It's taped in extra good. Here we go. Oh, bumpy, 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 bumpy. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. All right, here goes. Oh, I'm anxious right now. Oh. Oh. That's hard. Rear wheel drive. Oh, no. Oh. At least it was like a somewhat soft crash. Hopefully, my GPS is still on there. This is nerve wracking. Yeah, you're still good. A little bit of DiMaggio, Arch. There we go. Don't want, oh, so many cars. <laughs> Give it just the tiniest bit of throttle and it wants this like, yum, launch. I've only like maybe 60% throttle. I just can't wind it up. So like dainty, light. Uh. Oh no! Oh, I saved it, kinda. Oh, oh, oh. oh okay, enough. It's not destroyed though. But man, oh man, it's heart, it's heart, heart wrenching, man. Come on, sixty. 53. Maybe we need to do a bit more tuning and take it out again. I, I know it's got it in there, but it's just like, it's like trying to get a paper airplane to go 60 miles an hour. Oh, oh geez. 52. <laughs> <laughs> one pass with his not 25 cars. <laughs> they hate you. Ah. Uh. Uh. Oh no. Uh. You're doing good. Oh, motor's a little warm. A little scratchy scratch. You're fine. Oh, you're good. Oh no. Oh, I lost that. <laughs> okay. Maybe I need to stop. That's actually pretty tough. I, I shouldn't say that, but... Oh! Okay, 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 I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. 44. We came close. I'm not giving up. I think today we need to lick our wounds and call it. 53 miles an hour. Could I get 60 miles an hour out of it? Yeah, yeah, I probably can. A little bit of tweaking, tuning with weight and ESC. That's the only problem. It was just really, really light. A 10 scale rear wheel drive car hitting 53 miles an hour. Never designed for it, so I'm pretty impressed. But it's a looker, man, and I don't want to destroy it any more than I did. 
Yes, I said that. I don't want to destroy an RC car. In all honesty, this build took me close to 20 hours to do. And I only ran two packs through it, and I'm gonna put it away. I know it's not me, but you gotta leave well enough alone sometimes. I'm just really happy that a 14-year-old kid got a chance to live his best RC life. 